if you have a mapping from R3 to R3, defined by some matrix, uh, then you know, your V space would be in R3, your W space would be in R3, it'd be a mapping from V to W. We know that the rank plus the nullity of a transformation is equal to the dimension of the space, so in this case, the rank plus the nullity has to be 3. Nullity being the dimension of your null space, rank being the dimension of your row or column space. If the nullity is 1, that means your kernel or null space has a basis consisting of one vector, making it a line through the origin, just as would be the case in R2. If it's a line through the origin, and I've kind of depicted a line through the origin here, uh, though, uh, you know, could be at any angle. If your space is here, here, and out of the board, this line could be in the plane of the x and the z, or could be this way, or this way, or this way. Any direction in space just goes through the origin, depending on the transformation. Okay, so a general null space is just a line through the origin, if the nullity is 1. <coughs> if the rank is 2, as it has to be if the nullity is 1, right, because the rank and nullity have to add up to the dimension of the space, uh, that means your row space is, v, is spanned by two vectors, and is so a plane through the origin. And I didn't write it down, but your column space has the same property. It's going to be a different plane because it's over here in W, and it's not going to necessarily have the same orientation that the plane, the row space plane in V has. So I've attempted to draw a section of each plane. <coughs> There's a little shading that I could have added. It's not really shading, but a kind of a grid. Okay. Um, so what you then have is, again, a null space and a row space. Row space is some plane. The null space has some direction. And the null space is going to be perpendicular to the row space because it's easy to prove that the null space is always orthogonal to the row space. So you can think of this vector and this plane as being at right angles. Okay? If you have any point in the plane in, in, in R3 uh, that's not on this plane or this line, and there's a whole lot of R3 that's on neither the point nor the line, you can still get to it by a vector in the plane and a vector in the null space. So we take this vector in the plane and this vector in the null space, we add them together head to tail, and we get this vector that I call V. Okay, well, then if V is a sum of a VR plus a VN, just like we had in R2, so T of V, well, the equation you get uh, and the, the, the series of equalities you get is exactly the same as it was when we did it in R2. Because we're only relying on the linearity of T, we get TVR plus TVN. And then VN is in the null space, so TVN is the zero vector, and we're just left with TVR plus a zero vector, which is TVR. So that if this Well, okay, if this is VR, and over here is the point in the column space that we map this VR point to, okay, um, any point along this green line here that is through VR, through the VR point, parallel to the VN vector, parallel to our null space, all these points are going to collapse to this point on this plane. Okay. Uh, now, if the nullity is 2, well, that means that the rank is 1, so the column space and the row space have dimension 1. So we're going to have something like this, using purple for the row space and the column space. Uh, there are going to be lines in the null space having dimension 2 is a plane. So we have a row space and a plane. Now, if we take any point on this line, on the row space, it'll map to some point of the column space, and of course vice versa. But there are a bunch more points that also map to this point on the column space. Because why? 
Well, because if I add any vector in the null space to this vector in the row space, well, I'm going to have the same thing. I'm going to have a BR, which is the vector in the row space, and I could uh, draw that. Got a little nub of red chalk here. Okay, so I've got a VR. Here. And that VR maps to here. So here's the image of VR. If I add any vector in Vn, this is a vector in Vn, this, this, okay, because this vector is identified with this one, this vector is identified with this one, this vector is identified with this one, and all these are in the null space. So I take any of these null space vectors and bring it up here, tack it on head to tail with Vr, I get a point in a plane that's parallel to the plane of the null space, but the plane of the null space passes through the origin, the plane of this space passes through the VR point. So any point in this plane can be gotten to by a VR plus a VN. So that whole plane, this whole plane up here, all the points in this plane will map to this point in the column space. 